Hi, Chef Ramon. Thank you so much uh, for joining me today. I'm so excited to be speaking with you and for you to share your story. So uh, tell me a little bit about you, uh, what you do at the restaurant and how long you've been there. Yeah, thank you. No, Fevin, thank you very much. It's actually an honor for me and it's such an amazing experience to be able to share with you, like, you know, what is Spain and the culture and what all the Spanish food uh, is about. So very happy. Uh, my name is Ramon Martinez. I'm the director of culinary for the Jaleo restaurants, which is actually a Spanish concept that Jose Andres like brought to life almost like almost 28 years ago right now. And it's obviously all based in like tapas, Spanish cuisine, sharing food, and, and all these like cool things that we do in Spain. Uh, I came to America like almost 14 years ago now I actually came for one year I was going to stay for a year just to check on Jose and what's going on and 14 years later I'm happily married here I like I live the, the American dream and I'm, I'm happily probably staying ever after that's that's awesome um love to hear that love to hear that and that's typically you know that that happens people fall in love with with it you know what I mean and it's like so it's a blessing that you've gotten to experience that um, know, coming right? over. Yeah. Um, so you're from Spain. So um, obviously you, you've, you've traveled and you work throughout the country and uh, you know, but you're, you're, um, you're, you know, from the, the Catalan uh, region. So Catalonia, mm -hmm. it has like a big uh, influence on you. So tell me a little bit more about that, the passion of how your expertise in, in this as culinary and cultural expression started. Um, you know, uh, specifically for, you know, Catalonia, like as, as a regional um, hub for food and, and everything, you know, mm -hmm. so close to the coast um, and the Mediterranean and, um, you know, how and when did that start? Tell me a little bit about that story. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I'm from Terrassa, which is actually a small town next to Barcelona to like put you on, on side, you know, northern Spain in Catalonia. Mm -hmm. um, and it all started uh, like totally like all family based. So in my family, like I've always seen since I was like a very, very uh, kid, you know, the, the tradition of the passion of cooking, not only mm -hmm. with, uh, with my father, but only also with my, with my grandmother. My grandmother's passion was like every Sunday just to like cook for the rest of the family and, you know, and get her sisters there and, you know, and get all the nieces and, and uh, like everyone in the family every Sunday and have like a big meal, like all around the table. So it was, it, it all started having those memories as a kid, you know, as, as like getting to my grandmother's place, like always before and like seeing like my grandmother, like making fricando or making those stews that, you know, that take time and love and passion. And, and it always, <clears throat> it all started like first, first memories, I would say like when I was a kid and Sunday it would be, that special day that I know that my grandma would be like cooking for everyone and every Sunday would be like a, a new thing, you know, it would be a new surprise, a new dish, like a new, like, you know, a tradition because all, all, all it was, it was like tradition dishes that my grandmother, like, you know, grow up in a small town where they would have their own cows and obviously like that in Spain, like many years ago, that was like nothing strange, like everyone would have like farms and little backyards and they all would grow their own things and they would have chickens and rabbits and and all these and like snails like they would like <clears throat> literally grow up on a culture that it would be so normal just to like kill your own chicken or your own rabbit and and just yeah. cook it the following day which is basically almost like that that's how paella started virtually you know like families gathering together like yeah. on a saturday and, and just like, you know, like killing animals and mixing them with things and making like very traditional dishes, whether it's like paella or stews and, and all that. So all those like smells and flavors started and all this it transformed me then to my own family. Like, you know, like I still have those memories of when my mom, like she would, she loves to cook for the family. She would like, you know, now they retire and they keep like cook, still, still cooking every day, cooking for my brother and my sister and for their families. <laughs> And I would like every afternoon, my mom would make even or a sofrito for the following day or a stew for the following day, or, or we would cook like something for during the week, you know, but there was that special smell when I was like, maybe like 10 years old that to get home and get the smell of the scudella, which is a traditional soup that we make as, as, uh, as, as Catalan, which is based on like meat and lamb and, 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 and beans and, you know, and, and veggies and we mix everything. 
And we make the very traditional soup that you eat like the soup and then like all the meats that are involved. And that special smell of escudella would something that I feel like when I make now escudella and jaleo, like I feel that smell and literally transporting me when I was a kid and I would open the door of my house and I would feel that hearthy smell of like chicken and beef and like, you know, when you cook a, a, a super small for, for a, long, um, a long time. And and it would be every day also like getting home and know that my mom, oh, she's making the sofrito for the paella and she's making like uh, onion confit for the cow's liver for the following day. And every day you would have like a different smell when I would get home, you know, whether it was like like sweetness of onion confit or or like the soup or like everything. And yeah, I would get excited just to like see my mom, you know, and then like I would like to actually steal little pieces like of her, so her sofrito and and that's yes. how like it started to like, you know, like very get very familiar with like um, eating. Like also in Spain, you know, like all my life, like always for lunch and dinner, like even breakfast, we would like sit together, have breakfast, go to school, come back from a school, put the tables, wait for my parents to come back from work. It's because like, you know, like there's a break, we work like double in Spain. So do like we would sit together also in that break and wait for my family and then like for dinner also like get all the family so it was like you know more than just eating it would be more of like a gathering of the family and talk about the day and all these things that for me was very very like you no know, it's been normal all my life you know, which mm -hmm. you know it was like very different when I get to America and it almost only happens like for Thanksgiving or things like that. You know? <laughs> right, right. So that's uh, I mean that speaks volumes about the culture you know, where it's so, it's it's just warm and playful and every day, like what you said about every day you walk in, it's a different smell. What are you cooking today, mom, you know? And so it's just mm -hmm. shows that part of the day-to-day -day culture is centered around food there mm -hmm. where you grew up. And I get that sense um, at the restaurant because, you know, you use that to describe you. It's, it's the, you know, um, your menu, the whole spirit. It's, a, it's alive. It's... Um, you know, the smells and, and the cooking and the fact that, you know, I noticed, um, you know, you have like a daily tasting menu and it rotates. That sounds like your mother, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> so, and your grandmother. Um, and uh, you're, I, I um, you know, just to know that for you, it wasn't just Sunday. I mean, Sunday, that became a memory, you know, but mm -hmm. that became part of you and your passion and what you bring forth through your menus um, there at Leo. And so, it's, um, I, I see those parallels very clearly, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing, tell me a little bit about uh, the, the regional diversity when it comes to, um, you know, like for example, every household has their own way to, to prepare probably, like the sofrito is like a very basic thing, kind of like a ratatouille mm -hmm. would be in France or something, right? But every mm -hmm. family has their own way, you know, of, of of adding their own touch, their own craft to the tradition. Um, so tell me a little bit about kind of how that influenced, how that that uh, that diversity of you growing up, but also the regional diversity there in, in Catalan influenced um, how you, you know, um, mm -hmm. how you built the menu. And, uh, you know, um, I mean, obviously the small plates, the family atmosphere, very family oriented way of communal sharing, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Not yeah, and, uh, uh, oh, yeah. So it, it influenced it a lot, especially like products. Products is something though that when we get here to America, it was very difficult for me to find exact products. And a lot happened like in Spain. We all like it was very normal on also to go to the market every day, like I every day, every week at least twice or three times with my mom. You know, it would I would handle like the the little cart. And we would literally go to like La Plaza. I mean, my mom in Catalan is La Plaza. We call it, and it's like the market. And it's like where you see like the fish and like all the like, you know, big cuts of meat and all, like big fishes that they just got, you know, in the afternoon and you are able to buy it. So I was like, you know, you grow up already in that, in that world where you are very able to be close to the real food and to the people who grows actually this food, you know? And I would go to the market and I would end up knowing the woman that sells only nuts and it's all nuts. There's a little place and that's all nut based, you know? And yeah. you end up getting those relationships with that people, which I think that's also something that 
made me very um, anxious and, and, and anger of knowing more on the market. And then I, I would also, for me as a kid, something that would like <clears throat> change my life was like when they would actually let me get into like the, 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 the stale, the, the behind the stand, you know, where they sell things. And, you know, and in Spain, like now we're getting more conservatives about those things. But before, like people would touch things and we'd touch the fruit and they would let kids go behind and, and you know, and let me cut a little piece of the fuet or things like that, you know. So going to the market would be like also like a nice experience, you know, and yeah. and and being able to have this um, lucky to to like be close to the to to that food that was every day there and what is so available and so easy to feel like like big like you know what is like a real like a hollow snapper you know and things yeah. like that and being able to, so you grew up already on a safety place because you 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 are almost part of that you know like um like indulgence from the from the the small towns and the city because markets start like on the plus of a small town but still on big cities we still have those small markets what makes you feel that you are in a small town you know like yeah. for in la boqueria barcelona which is the most like like you know like a famous market and you still yeah. find those little place that only sell eggs and it's all <laughs> eggs from that little farm you know in in catalonia so it's like you you get very familiar and some like already when you know when you've been in the market and you hope that that you're gonna have a big impact you know and the product mm -hmm. was one of the first things that when I came to America it was like oh my god what I'm gonna do like you know I'm trying like when I'm making the scudella and I want to buy like four big ears I have to buy like 50 pounds like a whole box and it's all frozen in one piece and like oh my you know and, and that was like you know like like <clears throat> some of the the things that when you build the menu, you have you you have to like you know think about like all the collateral, but especially like the product. Yeah. You come you come such in from a place that everything is so available and so easily, and you find like bone marrow everywhere, and like and tribes on any like El mercado, you know, and 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 then like it, 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 it's it's the thing I think that that helps you to like you know to understand a lot of the food and especially because you know how it comes from and how how much care like also like my family my grandparents used to like kill their pig you know like monthly kill the pig and make embutidos and sell it so I also grew like you know like next to like you know being part of all these like things that you know like once a month when my grandpa you know would make la matanza which it was like you know like killing the pig and making you know, in Catalonia, you have so many different types of butifarra, the bloody butifarras, and we make a lot of embutidos. So actually, you know, for me, when when I came to America, it was very difficult to find like maybe a lot of products, but I always, there's always a way and there's always people who's going to work with you mm -hmm. to make that happen and to help yeah. you, you know, bringing that cultural thing, because at the end, like products, it's a product, but also <laughs> it has a lot of like history behind, you know, small yes. products like the calzots or the onions, you know, I remember when I got here, I was like, no, no, we need the calzots, we need the calzots. And I had someone <laughs> making them for me. And finally, when they made them and they send it to me, they they cut all because of the law to send to one, uh, to like Spain from here. They had to cut all the little, you know, things, the, the, the chips. But that's the most important part when you cook calzots, because you have to like, you know, like burn them basically. And, yeah. you know, like, oh my God, they cut the best part. And it was like, how's that? <laughs> You know, so, but then like you, you always find like a similar product or something that has a connection with what you're looking for. And, you know, yeah. during the time you just unload, you find, you know, this, this way to like merge, you know, like, uh, well, everything I grow up and what's like, you know, like real, like the way to find like products here in America. Yeah. And also like all the flavors, you know, like uh, I still have the fricando that my grandmother makes, like she's still alive. She's 97. But she still asks me every time I go to like Catalonia, like to, like one day I go to hers to like eat and she still asks me like what she wants me to make when I go, you know? Yeah. And that's just still all based in like my favorite things from like growing up and all these dishes that she would make on Sundays. There's yeah. always my the favorite ones, you know? Like fricando was one, which is like a super traditional like beef bill stew made in Spain with like, like different mushrooms. Very yeah. simple with a sofrito, you know, but it has this, flavor so I actually like ask like you know use her recipe to like like mm -hmm. like bring it to the jaleos obviously in a bigger volume and in a different way but to be able to the people like enjoy that 
that you know like earthiness from grandma yeah. and all this yeah. and you still you know there's a lot of dishes that when you make them like people just love that like they feel that you know grandmother like and a lot of times it's just like a sofrito only needs like time like maybe six hours or seven to cook like onion and garlic and tomato very very slow but that's yeah. what develops all the sugars and what makes like simple like onion like tomato yeah. and, and and garlic like a, a special you know and amazing after you cook it for like seven hours you end up having like a base that brings all your food like to a different like level you know yeah yeah absolutely you know just hearing you talk it sounds like your grandmother had a, an amazing influence on you because for you the entire thing is personal so the fact mm. that you just said like when you, you would walk in she still asked you she leads with her heart she says what do you want me to make you so mm -hmm. you know to me yeah. it's it's you know and even talking about the the markets how how um hearing you talk about the influence that that had on you um the way that you build and you you focus on your menu choices at the restaurant at Leo is is that the to me I hear that the customers can trust your choices because you lead with that passion it's like you have it has to if it's not the exact product you're going to search long and hard and, you know as far yeah. as you need to to find something that's similar that truly has that connection where you mm -hmm. feel in your heart that you can put that on the plate that that represents you know uh, the dish that you want to make and and the flavor and the experience and the memory you want your own customers to walk away with. Mm -hmm. and so that's exactly. what I hear. Yeah. That's what I yeah. hear when, when you're talking about all that. And, uh, and uh, you mentioned the Bocaria. I, I have an image of that because I was lucky enough a few years back to actually walk into that market. So um, in Barcelona. And so I, I totally get what you're saying and be, being able to touch the fruit. If only they knew the influence that that would have left on you so many years later and you're, <laughs> you're you know um and and being able to get in that stall and touch and cut things and get close to the food I mean that speaks volumes to how mm -hmm. uh you know personal your menu is to you you know mm -hmm. so um thank you so much for sharing that part so tell me um a little bit more about um the the specific dishes so like the food and drink how do you feel you mentioned your grandmother you mentioned you know just the, your memories of growing up um how do you feel that the recipes the presentation um come across you know and, and we can touch on you know uh the whole gamut kind of, I noticed, you know, your, your menu is uh, a lot of things are very shareable. There is things from the sea, obviously the, um, and, uh, the seafood and the fish and, and, um, you have some meat dishes there. I noticed, uh, as well, obviously. And then you have some things for, you know, vegetarian and some things that are fried and the, obviously the, the paellas and, and the, and the rice dishes. Um, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of variety. And so as much as, you know, you can share about kind of the defining qualities across all of those um, those categories. Um, what do you feel kind of stands out for you across those? So, I mean, I think at Jaleo, you know, like, um, and, and it's not at Jaleo, it's about also like Jose. Yeah. Like one of the main like things that Jose has impacted me a lot on like when, you know, when, I grew up in Jaleo and inside his concept and, you know, like, I mean, obviously, like, I did a lot of developing, but before I came, Jaleo was already alive and there's been a lot of people there already that have followed Jose's um, magic and also authenticity, like something that Jose fights and, and is very, you know, like, um, passionate about is, like, also about the passion, but the authenticity of, like, what we're doing, you know, and that's something that he had on his heart. And I think that's something that, you know, it was also like, like in my heart, but I never had the, the possibility of like to, to show or maybe to like bring abroad, you know. So growing with him, you know, my, my career in Jaleo, I was lucky enough to like to have Jose that would take us like twice or three times a year in Spain. And we, I, we would go to regions in Spain that I never wear before. And I would have products from Spain, you know, in traditional dishes that I never had before. And they're like, oh my God, they have so much history behind, you know, and so many years of years and cultures and, you know, all the Muslim influence on Spain and all these parts that there are more from Southern Spain. I'm from Catalonia and I didn't travel that much to the Southern. So I was, you know, like 14 years ago to be able to like keep growing and keep like, you know, like, getting that knowledge about deep Spanish culture. 
And and that starts to create, you know, like a big influence. And, you know, in Haleo, you'll see like, you'll see like, like the croquetas we make in Haleo, like they're like still like how, like grandmothers are still making in Spain. Like we boil the whole chicken, we dread the chicken, we mix it with the bechamel. It's like, it's something that in Spain, so many places, they don't even make the croquetas like that. Like they just buy them frozen, you know? And mm -hmm. that's a very simple way, but also like making the stocks, it has a personality, you know, like, like being like, you know, from the Mediterranean, it has a lot of influence to me on how to use like the, the scraps of the fish and the, like the, the monkfish heads. It is impossible to get monkfish heads here in America because like they throw them away on the, on the sea because they take too much weight and too much space on both. And, you know, it's almost like impossible to get a fish head when then in Spain is like you go to the fish markets and, or to the mercados and they will like literally give all those like, you know, like all those little like cintas, which is the long thin uh, fish heads and all this like monkfish that they don't use. They like give it to you for like almost free, you know, yeah. and, and that's also like, uh, like using all those things, like also like you make a beautiful stock. So, you know, the stocks at Haleo, they still made with like such a lot of passion be behind, you know, like getting all those pieces and roasting a lot of like the, the, the lobster heads and trying to make it especially like in Spain and have seen like all my life and how I've learned, like, you know, traveling in the world around Jose uh, mm -hmm. in Spain, you know, traveling in Spain. So it's um, that, that also makes like a lot of like influence how you build your menu, you know, being able to like knowing not even Catalonia, but also like all over Spain which <clears throat> it, it made me realize, you know, that I was so deep on like a lot of, in the Catalan culture, we, you know, and Spain is like an amazing place. Each like a small town has yeah. their own like very cultural deep thing, you know, that yeah. makes the things for a reason because maybe they use this product that no one else used, like maybe, you know, and it become like a big dish on that small town, you know? So all these like little costumes and uh, like, you know, may, uh, like way to do things, this idiosyncrasy of the, of the, 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 the little villages, you know, like that's yeah. also like, I think it make a big impact on me, like knowing like, wow, you know, like you still go to Spain and you go to those little small villages and they, there's a still place that they still like keep those traditions about making things, things, or maybe making one thing one day a year, you know, like yeah. that special, you know, all those like traditions around the food. So, yeah. um, you know, like we have like, if you go to Haleo and yeah, you read the menu, you'll see like from all over Spain, like deep dish, very traditional things. And sometimes the dish is like just burning peppers on, on a fire because like the scalivada is like literally burning peppers and then peel them and then dress them with like extra virgin olive oil and a little sherry dressing, you know, and you have like the, like the beautiful most Catalan dish, you know, just like roasted burnt peppers with olive oil. Right. So we also, we have like so many like, like deep, like romescu, which is the sauce that's so traditional from many hundreds of years, like, or, or even thousands, you know, that had all the influence from the, the Romans, you know, and all, all the nads, you know, before, you know, we, we have a lot of like base tradition dishes without tomato, because also like, you know, like tomatoes came with America, you know, with Americans. So yeah. there's like a lot of like those connections with also time and, and, and tradition, but you know, like, and that's yeah. making Haleo a very fun menu to work around because you can have like the most deep traditional dish, but we can all, we also have like a liquid oil, you know, which is like something that Serrano Adria developed and Jose gets some influence, you know, while. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, that's amazing. You know what stood out when you said that is, I mean, I could imagine you, the fact that you said that you grew up in, in, in uh, you know, the, the Catalan region and, and when you got to travel and it's almost like to you, it's each experience opened your mind further. So uh, yeah. do you really think about that? That, you know, maybe you tried something and someone said, oh my gosh, I've never had this before. This, yeah, it's tradition. We've been doing it for a thousand years. And you're like, yeah. what? What? I had no idea. And I grew, you know, in the same country. And that, yeah. you know what I mean? A, a personal example yeah. of that is like tuna. It's like, you know, like yeah. the Tundal Madrava, which is the southern, you know, tuna uh, yeah. that they came from the, the Atlantic and they go to ovulate to the Mediterranean, you know, and yeah. it's like, the best tuna in the world because they pass through Spain and, and Gibraltar and the stretch of Gibraltar between Africa. So they add when when the tuna goes there and goes to Ebulate, it's when it's more fatty. 
So it's like, that's when they call it in an ancestral way, which is called a tunda almadraba. That is the tune gets lost on a, on, a, on, a, on a maze. And then they do like a thing that they pull the tunas out and the guys still. And, you know, I grew up without eating tuna all my life. Never. Yeah. Like, for a reason, my mom, my dad, they were like no big fans <laughs> of tuna or salmon because they didn't grow up with tuna or salmon neither. So, uh -huh. man, I went like when I started go to like Sara de los Atunes, which is in that little part of southern Spain with Jose every year. And I start to have the tuna that was like, oh my God, like, how is that possible that I, you know, I was yeah. never involved on that, you know, like big tuna thing that we have like in Spain, you know, and yeah. now like, it's like it opens your whole world about like a new species, you know, and I obviously grew up on the, on like close to Barcelona. So, you know, yeah. like fish and seafood, it's been involved all my life in like so yeah. many, like my family also would go every Friday to the market and pick the fish and like cook it at home, either fried or like, yeah. you know, pick just fresh fish that they knew that it would arrive Friday, like, you know, like around 4 p.m. and just cook it the same night, you know, the same night right. because it would be literally like a five hour, like caught fish, you know. So right. I've been also like involved in, 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 in many seafood, but then da -da, like all of a sudden you go to the South and you get to the new, you know, yeah. like tuna thing, which is like huge also. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, you talking about how you, I mean, clearly you've had this in your heart since you were, you know, your childhood, like you said, because even now, you know, everything uh, that you're experiencing through your travels, working with Chef Andres and on the menu and, and your work together on that, it's, it's all passion. It's all, it, you, I mean, clearly it's all, you take to heart what you learn and what you experience and, and you put that forth through your menu. And so that's, you know, also what I, what I hear there. So again, it's, it's just speaks to that very personal, very uh, passionate, playful, you know, aspect of the culture that I feel like just hearing you talk about it, I feel like comes through, you know, it's not just what's on the plate, the ingredients, how it looks, um, how it yeah, tastes. Yeah. It's, it's, multi-dimensional and so that's again it goes back to you know what what we're saying about and I, yeah i think spirits. like passion yeah i think yeah. like passion is something that you have to hold you have to put when you cook and it yep. always be translated at yep. the end of like when it gets to the plate always you know and that's like i mean when my grandmother used to cook or any grandma used to cook cooks because she wants to gather people and because of love <laughs> and there's no there's no like you know, profitability, like reason behind that at all. You know, it's always like, and that's why I think like, like those, like, like lunches in my grandma's house, it was, all, yeah. was always so special because she would cook knowing that all the family would come. And I think that when you put so much love in cooking and you take yeah. like six hours instead of two and, you know, it ends up always translating to the, to, 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 to the dish, you know. Yeah. So oh, in absolutely. restaurants, I think in restaurants it happens the same. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, clearly you talked about your travels uh, and, and some of the places that you've, you've been. And um, tell me, uh, what stands out as, as far as some favorite things to do? What, you know, is there something that stands out in terms of, uh, you know, the, the reasons that you've gotten to see uh, that you've never done before, you've never seen before? Um, and then how do you feel those things maybe influenced you in some way in how, um, the, the spirit or the way of life of some place that you've been uh, in Spain that you feel that you you carry back through at the restaurant, you know, is it, um, it could be the way that, you know, uh, people celebrate. It could be the way, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it, I think, I, I think in, in, in general, yeah. in general, for me, what more impact it, it made, you know, one of the things it's, I think it's all about the sharing particular thing that we have in Spain you know I mean when I came to America I mean I mean there was jaleo but we, now there's like this big boom of tapas and sharing and small plates but you know like even when Jose put like you know jaleo that was something that was really unknown for many of the people you know and and Americans are was all about you know your big plate and your big portions and full of like it's just for you and no one touch my food whether, you know, in Spain, always is like, you know, like the more, the more, the merrier, just put more plates on the middle. And we have, you know, now, unfortunately, with all the COVID, the double dipping thing is like going away, you know. But for me at Jaleo, I always would be like, oh, my God, like watching at the guests and be like, 
why they don't like like why they just don't get the croquette with the fingers and just bite it or like yeah. you know or why they try why they break the flan and put the flan back to their plate <laughs> instead of like just eating it from there you know yeah. all these like little cultural things and the, the whole sharing thing about food that is for me like like so like it was so normal and we grew up with it about double dipping and sharing from main plates and all this and that but he was like wow you know and it's something that uh, you know that uh, I think that he, like Jose and Haleo in general like change it a lot of like the perception, the guess of like you know like it's so much fun to have like a small different dishes and being able to try all the food for, that everyone can have you know yes. whether you have your your own thing, yeah. and and Haleo it's always been that big part where I was saying the authenticity that Jose is. is it's passionate about you know and he's like you what's a porron like you know why Spaniards we drink from a porron which is that thing you know we, yeah. it's fun and it's actually share that's a shareable thing that is like you know free to use and you know or why we all eat those like you know like the, um, the calzot which is this onion that you have to peel and you dip and you eat it with your like hands or even like you know like sucking the head of the shrimp oh my god yeah. at the beginning I was like so upset every time you know when I was like literally the chef of one of the haleos and we have guests like giving tell, like bringing back the paella because they didn't want to see the the, the heads of the shrimp and I was like oh my god but that's the best part of the paella like you you know that part of like you know it's in Spain it's supernatural or you just literally do it and stack the whole thing and for us it's like the the god you know it's like right, right. Of the god. Yeah. and and here at the beginning I was like no but you know and showing and then like it was so fun because I would bring like bring like pink shrimp, pink shrimp from Maine that that's delicious. It's that seasonal small pink shrimp that is very similar of like the little gambas that we have like in 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 Andalusia that we boil the gamba blanca. And mm -hmm. oh my god, it was like that something you know that you boil the shrimp and you just serve shrimp and that's it and salt. But the magic was like you have to cut the head and suck that juice. And so I would bring those like you know like. <laughs> The shrimps from Maine and actually made like big like pre-shift meeting with the servers and have every server was like now you're going to get one shrimp and you're going to separate the head and you're going to taste it because yeah. you have to understand you know what and trying to fight about this like the, that now the older I'm getting sometimes like whatever they don't want the, sh the head okay because we have a lot of you know like guess that whether you know like yeah. they don't understand this cultural part you know but oh my god at the beginning I was like so it was like on my nerve, you know, like making yeah. sure that the people were like doing the same thing that I would do in the face. Right, right. And you know, that's part of, again, that's that's that love, it's out of love. It's, so it's, you know, you, you, it's all about making them feel that, yes, it's out of their comfort zone, you know, for, for you know, someone walking into uh, Haleo, you know, as a Spanish restaurant and saying, you know, what is this? I'm not used to it. And they're, you know, maybe they're uncomfortable, but that's where you come in, your, 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 um, you know, your staff, they, your guests, mm. and it's, you say, it's almost like you're saying, it's okay, it's, it's part of the culture here, you're safe here, we love mm. you, you're at our table, yeah, yeah. this is how we do it, you can, you yeah. can share, yeah, you don't yeah, look yeah. bad, you know, do it, you know what I mean, um, you don't, you and, know, and, yeah, and, uh, there's people sometimes who try it and like it, and there's yeah. other, there's other guests that they never thought about it, and you yeah. show them that to squeeze, Okay, you don't want to suck it, but maybe squeeze the stems <laughs> of the head on top of your right, on the yeah. paella, and eat it. And there's right. so many guys that they try it for the first time, like, oh my God, they've been like, like yeah. never thought about doing that. And it's amazing, you know, and it's right. such a very small cultural <laughs> thing that is so yeah. normal for us, like, you know, for a, for a Spaniard and that, you know, that then sometimes it doesn't translate to the Americans, you know, but there's just like, obviously like it, 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 it's just about the product and the you know the cultural thing behind it. yeah no for sure and and it just helping them overcome their nerves because at the end of the day mm. that's what it is because they've never mm. they've not experienced it so when you come out with with humor like you are with humor and with love and you know it's it's fine let's help you you know and mm -hmm. uh, and just help, helping them overcome their nerves with that um that's again it's part of your your playful atmosphere it's part of the culture it's very traditional to do that yeah. you know um and and uh i love that um so one last question for you when you think about kind of uh you know the, the atmosphere um so think of all your senses um what do you feel and obviously when people step through your doors at any of the locations but specifically we're talking about 
you know, the hub there in, uh, in DC. Um, you know, they're coming in to discover and to kind of share in that spirit of Spain. Um, what do you feel is evoked through the senses mostly? Is through either sight, sound, taste, the ambiance, the decor. What are some things that stand out to you? Yeah. Well, I think in general, though, I, we have to like chef, be yeah. like, feel lucky because I think the, the, you know, the cooking and eating and, yeah. and enjoying a dish, like if you think about it, it's like normally you use all your senses, right? Because you like, you like the food or not. Like you hear things, you know, like the sizzling or you, when you put it on your mouth, it like, it's not like I had experience when I was like, you know, I was lucky to go to El Bulli when it was alive and I would eat dishes and it would make me laugh. You know, it would make me laugh, like thinking like, like how that person arrives to that, you know, so I, we would laugh in a table, we start laughing all together and was like, wow, you know, like, so I think like having the base that kitchen, you know, like you have the, the text that also when you eat. So you have like, I think all, all um, senses involved, but there's also this, like, like, you know, like chillings, like when food gives you chillings, what, what's that sense? You know, this is like a new, I think it's like, it, it just, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's like when you have a bite and whether it is like, you know, a fried egg with potatoes, you know, and, or it is like this magic thing that you got to El Bulli restaurant, which is like, you know, such an avant-garde thing. I think a lot of depends of like, well, like, like where you are, you know, like, like I would be exactly like having those chillings and almost crying when now I go to my grandmother's and she still makes the canelones because I asked her and she's 97 and they, I feel it's like the best thing and almost want to cry because the whole thing, like, you know, like all this integrity and all this like 97 of years of a person like putting all this love behind the family. You know, but also then you can go and have a grilled piece of Iberico pork in Spain yeah. and like be crying also because it's like the most like amazing thing, you know. Yeah. So I think like the, it's like almost undescribable, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. this sense of when you enjoy food, because yeah. I think it has a lot to do about like where you are, who you're sharing it with, like how you feel, you know, <laughs> who's with you and, you know, and. And you can end up having like an amazing experience, you know, like where there are so many factors involved. Yeah. I hear you loud and clear. Um, again, it goes back to uh, the heart of it. So, you, you know, what is that sense? It's an emotion. It, and if it's an emotion, it's an emotion it, touches, yeah. it touches the heart. And if mm -hmm. it touches the heart, then that means that the spirit of Spain is alive and well at Hileo. Um, that's what that speaks to me. And I, I, I hope that that sort of speaks to everyone who uh, hears your, your story and, and uh, tunes into to, you know, this talk and, and to learn you know, more about, about that um, and what they can experience. So thank, I want to thank you so much, uh, Chef Martinez. No, thank you. And uh, with, with everyone, and I want to encourage everyone to come in and visit you there uh, in, in um, at, uh, the hub right there in DC. Uh, and, Leo and, and again, Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to share like passion because I think when you share passion we, uh, about food and about cooking and about like cultural, like, like, you know, life experience through food, you know, a lot of people like get also those emotions and those feelings that you're able to have when, you know, you just uh, enjoy like food. Absolutely. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you.